Hi there, I'm David and welcome to acrylic painting for ages 9 to 16. We're on lesson one and before we get started on what we're going to paint today, I just want to go over what um, supplies that you need. If you got a kit from us here at the McRosty Art Center, um, you should have everything. But if you um, didn't purchase a kit, you didn't sign up for the class, but you still want to paint along with us, that is totally cool. You just got to go out and get some of the materials yourself. So first off, we have our paint. This is uh, Liquitex Heavy Body Acrylics, which I think are probably the best acrylic paints that you can use. Um, of course, every, every painter has their own opinions on this, but I think they're some of the best paints on the market today. And this is a really good kit that has a good overview of all the colors. So for the colors, we have yellow medium, we have naphthol red light, we have quinacridone crimson, dioxine purple, ultramarine blue, cerulean blue, phthalo green, yellow oxide, transparent burnt sienna, transparent raw umber, ivory black, and titanium white. So we got those, those are the colors that come in our kit. We also need to have something to paint on. So we have four nine by 12 canvas set panels. I like these a lot because um, they're pretty cheap. They're easy to use. You know, they're just like a little thin canvas panel, but they're also nice because if you do make a great painting on these, they're really easy to frame and it's hard to tell the difference between these and a regular stretched canvas when it's framed. So that's why we're working with these. But we also have three 11 by 14 stretch pre-stretched canvas. I like to get them from Dick Blick Studio um, just because they're pretty cheap, but they're also really good quality. These ones, the Studio Traditional Profile, I find to be some of the better ones. They're really good quality, stretched really well. These will last you a long time. So we got those. Then we need a palette. So you should have a palette, something to mix your paint up in and something to put your paint in so you can paint with. And then we should have our brushes. For brushes, we have a real tiny one to start with. This is a number one round. Um, it really doesn't, I think with brushes, like when you're just starting off, I don't think it really matters like what kind you get, as long as you get like the right sizes that you can work with. Um, using the synthetic hairs on them are always gonna be the cheaper. You know, if you buy horse hair brushes, they're gonna be very expensive. So, you know, definitely when you're just starting out, get like the synthetic brushes that are pretty cheap. Um, so we got a number one round, and then the, that just means, the round means the shape of the brush here. You see, it's kind of rounded at the tip. This is a number eight round, and then we move in to our flats. And a flat, you can see, has a flat edge. It's a little easier to see on the big ones. So you got a nice flat edge on here. I use mostly just flats. Every once in a while I use a round, but most of the time we'll be using a flat. So we have a bunch of different ones. We have a number two flat. We have a number four flat. We have a number eight flat. And then the biggest one is a number 12. So you should have four different flats like that. Of course, like if you're buying all this stuff for yourself, like you could, you could even skimp and just get like two of them, get a big one and a small one. It's totally fine. I'm just providing these for the kits. But yeah, if, if you can only afford like three brushes, I would get a big flat, a small flat, and then probably a small round. And you could maybe even, if you could even get like a, a medium round too, that'd be good. So those are all of our brushes. And then we have one more that we're not gonna use very often, 
but we just have like a really big flat. I don't even know what number this is. It's just a really big brush. You could even use just like a regular painting brush that you get at Menards or, or Ace Hardware or any hardware store or whatever. Doesn't really matter. You know, it's just a big flat brush. But we're not gonna use that very often. We're definitely not gonna use it today. The other thing that's nice to have is an easel. I have collapsible easels here. These are the only parts of the kits that we're lending out that uh, I want back. Everything else like is yours, but these easels I'd really love to have back. They're very nice and um, we've had them for quite a long time and I use them all the time in my classes. So it'd be great if we can get these back. If you can't afford an easel yourself, you wanna paint along with us, it's totally fine. You can just put your painting down here on the table or whatever, it's totally cool. Don't have to worry about that. Easel is kind of an optional thing. I just think a lot of the time it makes it easier to paint. But today, I'm not even going to use the easel. So, maybe we'll use it. So there you go. That's all the supplies that you need. Uh, something you'll have to provide yourself though is to get a cup with some water. Uh, acrylic paints are um, water-based paints, so you always have to use a little bit of water to get them to flow nice and smooth. So you always want to get a nice cup of water. I like using these old mason jars. Um, you can tell like this one's been around the block a few times, but um, get something that you can reuse over and over again because you're going to want something that's pretty sturdy that you're not going to knock over like when I hit it. But a lot of the times when I start painting, you always want to dip it in the water and then kind of wipe it along the top edge of your cup. So don't use something that you're going to drink out of. So there you go. So you can, you can get like disposable cups or just get like a, a nice jar like that, which you're never going to use for anything but your painting. So how about we get started on doing our painting? So today to start with, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do a color wheel. And we wanna make one ourselves. So let me show you what a color wheel looks like right now. That's what a regular color wheel looks like, but we wanna make our own. And so for today, we're only going to use a few different colors of paint. So, I got my paints here which are already open. For today, we're only going to use the yellow medium, the crimson, the ultramarine blue, and the titanium white. We're only going to use these four colors. So to get started on our painting, we need a pencil or a pen. Either one works, just lightly use either one. Because even with a pencil, it's really hard to erase on a canvas. So you always want to go really light with it. But take your pencil and find a spot somewhere around in the middle. It doesn't have to be exact. If you want to be exact, you can. You could measure the whole thing and find the exact center. I'm not that worried about it. Eh, maybe I want it right about there. So I put a little dot in the center. You see, just a tiny little dot. And then take a straight edge or a ruler. Um, if you don't have a ruler around, you can use anything with a straight edge, like the box on your painting. You can use another canvas. Anything that has a nice straight edge, because we're not measuring anything here, so it doesn't really matter. But go about as straight up and down as you can with your straight edge and just make a nice light little line going through your dot. And then we want to go on the other side from left to right and make a nice light line again going through our dot. So it should look kind of like that. And then from there we need to section it off into eight sections. So kind of find a spot so it goes like corner to corner almost. It doesn't have to be exact again. 
Art is never perfect, and that's what makes it great. Because if your dot isn't perfectly in the center, it's not going to perfectly go through, but it doesn't really matter. It's not perfectly going to go from corner to corner, but it doesn't really matter. And so you get it like this, so you got about eight sections there. Looks good. You don't need your straight edge anymore, so you can just say goodbye to that. Bye-bye. All right. Then from here, what we want to do is we want to start getting some of our paint out. So when you get your paint out, it's really important to just use a little bit to start with. Only use a tiny little bit because you can always get more out of the tube. You can't take the paint and shove it back into the tube. So always go with just a little bit to start with. And when I mean a little bit, I mean a real, real little bit. Just a tiny, tiny bit to go with. There. And you see here in my palette, I've got a very, very tiny amount. We're going to start off with the crimson, which is the closest to like a really true red. So we're going to start off with that. And we're going to pick a spot and we're going to take our brush. I'm going to use the number eight flat. Use whichever one is kind of comfortable for you though. I like using this one because it's about in the middle. And of course, we need to have our water here. So get your water around and your paint. Dip your brush in the water. And then you put your brush into the paint. Kind of get it going a little bit. I always like to go back to my water. Come back out to the paint. And get it so it flows nice and well. And you can pick any spot on here, any one of the eight sections. It's just after you pick this one, then it really kind of matters which way you go. Well, I'm gonna start with this one here. And just do your best to paint the whole thing in. Get a little more water. You know, if you wanna go quicker, you can use a bigger brush too. But I like using the smaller ones because when it gets down to here, like you can do this thing where you kind of use the side of your brush and you can get like a nice sharp line with it go like on the side and make a nice perfect little triangle there there we go and one thing that's cool to be able to do is like you take it kind of sideways and then twist it once it gets to a little bit bigger spot and then you can use the flat end of it to paint it out there see how we got that going and you see just that little amount of paint is covering all of this surface here. So we don't need to use a lot of paint to start with, but if you need more, like don't be afraid to just squirt out a little more. It's just like I said, you can't get the paint back into the tube once you squirt it out. But it's gonna take a little while to dry, so you can squirt out a good amount to begin with if you're gonna use that much. So it, it usually takes about 20 minutes to a half hour or so for um, the paint on your canvas to completely dry. And in your palette, it'll take even longer. It could take up to like two hours for the whole thing to dry there. And you see, I, I probably need just a little bit more crimson right there and squirt out a little bit more. But I can't stress that enough, like paint is expensive and the less you use or waste, the better. A lot of the time I see students squirt out a huge amount of paint and so they end up wasting all that paint and it's gotta be just thrown away then. Cause like I said, you can't get it back in the tube. You either have to use it or throw it away if you squirt out too much. Try and get a nice straight line though with this. It doesn't have to be perfect. Again, like I said, art isn't perfect. Doesn't, it's never anything to stress over. Nobody ever should stress over their art. There's some times where it just doesn't work the way you want it to, but that's okay. Nothing's perfect. Not, you know, once you get it mostly painted in. I like to smooth it all out 
go back over it and smooth it all out and get that nice. Of course, like I'm on this really old table that's been painted on a number of times, so I don't mind getting some paint on my table. But if you are, of course, put down like some newspapers or something, or you can get a, like a cloth or something like that and put it down. Then now I've got a nice straight line there. And then like I said, I like to smooth it out a little bit. And then we're gonna do something kind of cool here after I got it nice and smoothed out. Don't wash your brush off yet. Put it over here to the side and get your titanium white. Squirt out just a little bit of titanium white. There we got the cap back on. And dip it into the titanium white with that red on there. And then just on the edges, start putting a little bit of white in there. You see how it's a little streaky to start with there? That's totally okay. Just kind of like put the white around in a few spots like that. There we go. And then what, now we're gonna smooth it out. So now I want you to take it and smooth it out going back and forth. Don't try and pick a spot about like right around here. Don't go beyond that spot with your white and just smooth it out a little bit. You see, I'm just going back and forth and back and forth, smoothing it out and blending that white into my crimson, into my red, making it nice like that. And now I've kind of stopped at that spot. So now you do want to wash your brush off now. Now wash the brush off a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfect. Wash it off, dip it back into the crimson a little bit and come back to that spot and then go back and forth. You see I'm only going about halfway back and forth. This way you'll get a nice subtle gradation with your color and it'll look really cool. You can always go back and get a little more crimson. You see my white went a little too far there. So I'm going to paint it back over with a little bit of crimson. And there we got a nice cool gradation. Looks awesome. And then you can always do something like this. When I'm painting like this, I always like to then take a, a different brush. I've got this brush, and I'm gonna go and I'm gonna get my bigger brush, my number 12 here, and it's completely dry. This is what's called a dry brush technique. And you use your dry brush technique to really kind of smooth it out and make it really smooth and gentle. You don't want to get this brush wet. And then even if your paint start, you get too much paint on the one side, flip it to the other side and then kind of smooth it out that way. You get those nice, cool, subtle gradations like that. Oh, doesn't that look cool? Look at that. We got a nice gradation from our crimson to like a lighter pink color. Looks really cool. So then take these, wash them out a little bit. Oops, got a lot of paint on there. Really wash it out now though. You don't want to have that color polluting your next color. I even like to kind of squirt it out a little bit with my fingers. You can use like a paper towel or a rag to wipe it off a little bit to, to night dry, dry your bigger brush out. Because remember, we want to use a dry brush technique with this. So you want to make sure this one's dry. This other brush that we're going to use again, it doesn't matter if it's wet, but we do want to have it clean. So really swirl it around. You know, you can just really get it down all the way down to the bottom of your cup. Even hold your cup if you're worried about it spilling and really swirl it around. Get all of that color off of there. Like that. I'm gonna go get a paper towel and come back because I forgot to get a paper towel to wipe this off. Bang. So I got my paper towel just take it and just kind of, I like to do this, put it into your paper towel and just kind of wrap it around with the paper towel, wipe it off a few times and even just take it and put it on your skin. Feels kind of cool. Ah, oh, yeah. Nice and dry now. It'll be ready for the next color. So the next color when you want to do is we want to do some of the yellow. So let's get some yellow onto our palette 
don't worry about these other colors. You know, they're still in there. We don't have to clean that up yet. We just let it go for now. Get some yellow out. Just use a little bit. Again, remember, you only need a little bit. That little bit painted all of this. So let's get a little bit out there. You see, I got just a tiny little bit of yellow on there. Take your brush again, your nice wet one. Get it, make sure it's wet. And we're not going to go right next to it. So remember, we got to have that space for our orange. So go clockwise, skip one, and then go to this spot. And we're going to paint this in with our yellow. So instead of me having you watch the whole thing, I'm just going to have it done now. So bam, I got my yellow painted in, but I haven't put in the gradation yet. You want to do this while your paint is still wet on the canvas though. You can't put in like these gradations when it's dry. So we got to do it while it's wet. But make sure you squirt out some more white in a different spot. Because I used that other white with the red and now I've got some of that red kind of polluted into my white there. We don't want to get that on here because it's not going to keep it a true yellow color. So we take the white in there while this is still wet on the canvas. And remember, I just kind of start off by just dabbing a little bit into the yellow, not really painting it in, kind of just dabbing it in, adding that color in, and then I start smoothing it out. Smooth it out on that color. There we go. Get that nice gradation started, which is what we want. It's looking real good. I'm real happy with it. Nice cool gradation there. And then remember once we get to this spot, then we go back to our dry brush. We get our dry brush going and then really kind of smooth it all out. Oh, that's looking so good. Try and go, try and, uh, you know, go in little steps. So you saw, like, I put it in there first with my white, then with my dry brush. I only went to about there to start with. And then after that, then I went back up even higher. Because what will happen is it will mix on your brush, too. So... You don't want to take your brush all the way down to the bottom here once you get up high like this because then it'll just bring more white up there. But if you keep going slowly inching it up, then on your brush it'll slowly get darker and darker. And then so you can bring that darkness down into this other spot and get a nice subtle gradation there. It's a little harder to tell with the yellow because yellow is such a weak color, but it's pretty good. Looks good. Wash your brushes off again, and we're going to move on to the blue. So wash them. Brushes are all washed. I've got my ultramarine blue here. The ultramarine blue is about the purest blue, I think, and it's just my opinion. Like a Windsor blue is usually pretty good too. Um, but when I'm when I'm painting my own paintings, this is one of the colors I, I mean, all of these colors are the ones I use most of the time. I usually use a crimson and ultramarine blue because I think it's the best red, it's the best blue. So get out some of that blue, squirt it a little bit. Remember, just a little bit in your palette. Then, instead of just skipping one, though, we're going to skip two. So now go, keep going clockwise, and then from your yellow, skip, go one, two, and then this one, we're going to paint in blue. So go ahead and start painting that in blue. I'm going to paint the entire thing, paint the entire thing in blue right now.
All right, I got my blue painted in here, and then we're going to put in some more white. Again, don't use that same white that you used before. Squirt out just a little bit more white in a different spot. Just a tiny, tiny little bit though. You don't wanna to use too much. And then we're gonna get our blue going here. Remember, I just kind of dab some white in to start with. Go back in, grab some more white. You don't want to use too much paint or else it's going to be too white. But we do want to have a good amount on there so we get a cool gradation going. There we go, we'll get some more blue in there. All right, kind of spread it along all over the edge of the canvas there. And then now, remember it's time for our dry brush again. You make sure it's dry. Kind of flick it, you know, wipe it on your face a little bit. Mm, yeah, oh, that feels kind of nice. All right, so then, you know, paint in the gradation. And remember, just kind of start with little strokes in the top, just painting it in. There we go. And then you can always flip it around to get up to the top part and paint that gradation in. And you might even want to wipe some of that paint off a little bit. I'm just kind of wiping it off on my paper towel there. And then I'm even going to use just a little bit more on my bigger brush. Get a little more blue in there because the blue really changes with the white. So I'm going to get some more blue in there because I want that nice subtle gradation. I don't want it to be really stark contrast. So don't be afraid to grab a little more blue. You could use the other brush too if you wanted the wet brush. Um, but this one is fine. Like just don't get this the dry brush wet. That's the main thing. Because like I said, this is what's called a dry brush technique. It's really for doing like really soft, subtle changes like this. And then I went down a little too far. You can see I got it kind of streaky there. We don't want it streaky like that. So go back and dip it back into the blue. Gently smooth it across and get that nice subtle gradation. There we go. You can even kind of go a little back and forth in some of the spots if it's a little too streaky. See how I'm kind of going like left to right. Most of the time you don't want to be using that motion, but if it's a little too streaky in spots, you can see how I went left to right, and then I started going back up to it, subtly changing that color back to my dark blue. I'll even dip a little more blue in there, a little more ultramarine blue, and get it in there, get that nice, subtle change right there. Looks really good. I like it quite a bit. All right. Well... I, I don't know. I want to make, put a little more in there. I'm not completely happy with it. I'm mostly happy with it. There we go. Real gentle touches, though, when you're doing these gradations work the best. And one of the cool things about painting, one of the reasons why I became a painter, too, is it's okay to make mistakes when you're painting. The, if it's really bad, like if the painting is just awful or you do a spot like, you know, one of these and you just can't stand it, it's so bad. You just wait for it to dry and paint over it. That's the great thing about painting. Like if it doesn't work out and you don't like it, just wait for it to dry, paint over it. It'll be totally fine. You can always try it again. There's no reason you can't try it again. All right. So we've got our three primary colors here. We've got red, yellow, and blue, the three primary colors. The cool thing about these three primary colors, if you didn't know, is they can make every other color in the rainbow. So we're gonna work on making the other colors now. So in between red and yellow should be some orange. So let's get our brushes cleaned off. 
and then we'll start making some orange. So I'm gonna clean my brushes. All right, we got our brushes cleaned off, ready to start making some orange. Now, depending on what kind of palette you have, like if you have a flat one, like you could use like a palette knife to mix it up. It's just like a little, little tiny little plastic knife that you can use to mix your paint up. But with these ones where it's kind of like got these depressions in it, I like to use a brush to mix it up. Um, it just seems a little easier for me. So what we're going to do is we're going to squirt out a little bit of our crimson again and squirt out a little bit of yellow. But when we're mixing colors, some of the important things to remember is the strength of our colors. The colors are not equal in strength. Yellow is the weakest color. Blue is the strongest color. And red is kind of in the middle. What does that mean? Well, it means when I'm mixing my colors, like I'm always going to need more yellow than the other two colors to get a good, true, mixed, perfect color. So when I'm making my orange, I want to have just a little more yellow than I have of my crimson. So you see I've got them squirted out over here, but because we have all of this other space and I want to use some yellow for later too, I'm going to scoop up a little bit of yellow and move it over there. We're going to scoop up a little bit more because we're going to need a little more than that. And then because I'm going to use this brush also to mix my color, I'm going to go into my crimson. If I get a little bit of yellow on there, it's not that bad. But you see how much crimson I have on my brush and then how much is in the tray there? It's about a one to two ratio. So I'm going to take this though and put it in there. We're going to mix it up and hopefully we get a nice pretty orange. Oh yeah, it's looking pretty orange. It might be even a little too dark. I might even need a little more yellow. So I'm going to go back in and get that yellow. And if I pollute that yellow, you see I got a little bit of that in there. It's okay. That's what these other ones are for. I can always put some yellow over here too. It's totally cool. Or if it's if they're all filled up, I can just go clean one of them off. It's totally cool. It's okay. Don't worry about it. All right. So we got a little more yellow in there. All right. There we're getting a good orange. You see how weak that yellow is though compared to the red. The red just immediately overtook that yellow. All right, we got a nice orange here. It's all over my brush, which is great. Then I can just get that wet and start painting in the orange in between. Oh yeah, that's a good orange. That looks really good. Paint in the orange in between our red and our yellow. We get this all in there. And if you run out of paint that you mixed up, you can always just mix up some more. Get it wet a little bit. Get back in there with it. Paint in that orange. Try and get a nice, good, straight line. But if you don't, it's not the end of the world. It'll be totally okay. You know? And then, because orange is mixed up of red and yellow, of course the orange is going to be weaker than our red. But it's going to be stronger than the yellow. Get all that painted in there. Get a nice looking orange. Oh yeah, this is a good orange. I really like that color. I'm really happy with it. Looks really good. Try and get a nice point there. You see how I turned the brush again? You know, you can paint it like this and then turn it and get that sharp edge on the end. So you can get a nice straight line with that. And then once you get down to the bigger spot, you can go back to the flatter edge of it and paint in a nice straight line with that as well. Always go back to the water to make sure it's smoothing out nice and well. It should, should go in a very smooth motion like that. So it just paints it right in until you run out of paint on your brush. And then you go back and get more paint and a little more water. 
just get it nice and smoothed out there. Oh, my line isn't perfectly straight, but that's okay. It's art. It's not supposed to be perfect. Don't worry about it. There we go. And then I kind of smooth it out so it isn't so streaky. You can even kind of wipe your brush off a little bit on there if you got a little too much paint on there. Looks good. And then, of course, we want to go back into our white. But you can now, you could use, if you have a little more white left over from the yellow and the red, when we smooth those out like I do, like you can always just use one of those for the orange because orange is just made up of red and yellow. So you can always just go back in and grab one of those or both if you need to. Kind of put that down there. And then we want to go back for, what is it? Our dry brush. Put this one aside for now. Go back in for our dry brush. Wipe that on our face a little bit. Just make sure there's no paint on it. And then take your dry brush and start from a good spot in the middle and go down. And then remember, like I said, smooth it out best you can. You can always go back in and get a little more orange if you need to. And then usually about this spot, remember, kind of take it and flip the brush so I'm painting with the other side which doesn't have as much paint on it. And go up to the top and kind of smooth that out too. Smooth it all out. Oh yeah, we got a nice good gradation there. Up to the top. And you remember, a tiny little strokes, very gently, softly, will get us a nice, soft, subtle gradation. And if you pull a little too much white, you see I've got a little too much white pulled up there. I can always dip it into the orange that I've got a little left over and start from the top and paint that in down. Get a nice cool gradation there. Add a little more orange to the top. I want that a little darker up there. And paint that in like so. All right, we got our nice beautiful orange gradation. Looking awesome. Beautiful. All right, again, what do we have to do? Wash your brushes. So let's wash the brushes. Okay, now we've got these two spots here that we've got to work on. And they're both going to be kind of green. This one is going to be more of our true green, the one next to the yellow. And then this one is going to be more of a bluish green, kind of what I call an aquamarine color. So we're going to start with this one here, which is next to our yellow. So I need more yellow on my palette. So I'm going to find a spot where I can put in some yellow. And with this yellow where it is there, I want, like I said, I want to make a true green. But blue is so much stronger than the yellow. So I'm going to take a little bit of this blue that I have here from before and look just a tiny, tiny little bit of it on my brush there. Tiny little bit and I'm going to bring it over to the yellow and I'm going to mix it up here in my yellow. And this is going to give you a nice yellowish green. It's not exactly perfect so I might need just a touch tiny little more blue but a very, very tiny amount of blue. Like the blue is so strong, it just overpowers that yellow. You see that? You see how it's already kind of overpowered it completely. And we've got kind of a yellowish green color there. That's a nice green though. I might even want it a little darker, but nah, I think it's good. We're gonna leave it like that. And then we're gonna paint this in green. We've got a little bit of paint on me. That's okay, wipe it off. The only thing is just don't stick your fingers in your mouth. You get paint on your hands, it's okay. It washes off pretty well, pretty easily. 
Um, the only time to be concerned when you get paint on your fingers is if you have a cut because then that paint will get into your bloodstream. That's kind of a serious deal. So always be um, mindful of that when you're painting. If you have any cuts on your fingers, you might even want to wear like some gloves, um, some like little plastic gloves always work pretty nice. But if you don't have any cuts on your fingers, don't worry too much about it if you get paint on your hands, it's okay. All right, we got our green here. We're gonna paint that in next to our yellow. It's kind of a yellowish green. <clears throat> paint that green in, that nice yellowish green. This is what you usually call a warm green. Like green and purple both have shades where they could be considered kind of a warm color and a cool color. And next week we'll talk a little bit more about what are the warm and cool colors. But just for now, just know that there's kind of like two different types of green and there's two different types of purple. Of course, there's lots of different shades of every color. You know, there's dark yellows, there's light reds, there's, you know, light pur light blues, light purple. They're all, there's all different types of shades. But really for what we're working with, we just want like, kind of like a, a yellowish green and a bluish green. All right, we got our green in there. Let's smooth it all out again. And then we're gonna go and put some white in there again. And then with the white, it doesn't matter which one you use. If you've got a little left over from the yellow white or the blue one, it doesn't really matter. You just put that on the edge there again, like we've done four other times before. Don't worry if you get a little bit more blue in there, that's okay too. If you have leftover white, you know, use it like this. If you don't, just um, squirt a little more out. The main thing you don't want to put in there and your green though is red. Make sure there's no red that goes into your green. It should only be blue or yellow. And we've got a nice subtle gradation going on there. So I'm gonna put this brush aside. Remember, grab our dry brush again. Make sure it's pretty dry. There you go. And smooth it on out. So we get a nice subtle gradation going on there. Dip it back into our green when we get to near the top. And kind of smooth that out a little more. Got that nice subtle gradation going. It's looking good. I love it. There we go. Nice yellowish green with that subtle gradation. All right, so now we need to make our darker green, our blue green, our ultramarine blue, and our yellow go together to make like an aquamarine kind of color. So we don't need a lot of blue. I do need a little bit more though, so I'll squirt that out. Oh, and what did I forget? I forgot to wash my brushes. So wash your brush. Okay, my brushes are clean. I got a little squirt of blue there, but I need some more yellow. So I'm gonna squirt that, and I'm gonna put it right where I made that green again. Actually, I probably got too much yellow there. It looks like I got too much, I don't like it. So this is what I was talking about though. I squirted out too much. I can't get it back into the tube though. So I just, I just gotta take some of it and put it aside. Like maybe I'll use it later, I don't know. I'll use it for something else. Maybe I'll paint in a little more in my yellow or something. But we only want a little bit of yellow with this one. And then take a good amount of blue. More, almost more blue than the yellow. I might even need a little more blue. Yeah, I want a little more blue. Cause it's not supposed to be so dark green. It's supposed to be almost a little more blue than green. Get a little more blue out there, bring that over here. 
And what you can do too, is if this is too much paint, don't mix it all in with this. Take some of that blue, put it over here. Take some of that that you've already mixed, but not all of it, and bring that over here and mix that with your blue. And then now we're getting the color I'm talking about, that aquamarine blue, the dark bluish green. That's the color I want right here. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. We get that into our water and paint that onto there. It's almost a little too more, too green. It's not as blue as I'd like it. One thing you can do though is mix. You can always mix on your canvas too. So I've got all this green on there. I need it to be a little more blue. So I can squirt out a little more blue like that and just mix this blue in on the surface of my painting here. It's totally fine to do this. As long, the thing you got to remember though is if you're going to do that though, you got to cover the entire part that you've painted and it's still got to be wet. It's not going to work if it's dry. It's still got to be wet. There we go, that's the color I was talking about. That darker greenish blue. That's what we want. Need a little more water on my brush. There we go. And let's just say, this is just purely hypothetical, but let's just say you get too much paint on your surface here. I got too much paint on my canvas. Oh no, what am I gonna do? Well, you can try and scrape it off a little bit with your brush, just kind of scraping it off and then putting it onto your palette or paper towel, or I can just take the paper towel and wipe it with the paper towel. Don't worry about it. You know, like I said, if you really make a huge mistake, you can always just let it dry and Try again, paint over it. But there we go. That's that nice darkish greenish blue that I wanted. I got it nice and perfect now. And then we got to put in our gradation again. So if you have some white left from either your red or your yellow or your blue, you can you grab it from there or squirt out some more white if you need it. Just don't take it from the red. Get a little white on the edges there. Remember, I just kind of dab it in to start with. Just kind of dab it on there. And then we subtly, slowly smooth it out. Smooth it out a little bit. And then we go back and we grab our dry brush. Put this paint brush aside, grab our dry brush and smooth it out starting at about the top there and smoothing it out and going up a little higher, grabbing some of that darker and smoothing that out. Smooth it all out. You can start going all the way a little closer to the bottom now. There we go. And then I'll move up to the top, smooth it out. Nice subtle gradation. Color it all in, bam, that looks great. So we got a nice subtle gradation on our darker green blue. We only got two left. All right, we're getting there. So what do we gotta do now though? We gotta change colors, so that means we gotta clean your brush. So my brush is clean. I did have a little bit of paint on the edge of it, so you can always just take that paper towel and just really wipe it off. Make sure there isn't any paint left on your brush when they're clean. Because if there's still paint on there and you go to mix something else, it's going to pollute that color, it's going to change it in a way that you don't want. So you want to make sure to clean your brushes really thoroughly. It's really important. Alright, so we got two spots left. These are both going to purple, but purple really has two different versions of purple. Remember, if you know your rainbow colors, it says Roy G. Biv. 
So you have red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and then there's an I and a V. What are those for? It's purple, right, at the end. There's no P at the end, though, of that because it's indigo and violet. Indigo is like a bluish purple and violet is like a reddish purple. So we're gonna mix those up right now. So remember, blue is the strongest color, yellow, red is a little weaker. It's not that much weaker than blue, but it is a weaker color than blue. So for our indigo, our blue purple, we wanna use a little more blue than the red and vice versa with the violet. We wanna use a little more red than our blue. In fact, with the violet, you wanna use hardly any blue. A little bit, but not a lot. So I'm gonna take a spot here. My palette's starting to get kind of full, so I could wash it out, but I'm not going to. I'm just gonna let it go, because there are spots where it's just like this with my bluish white. That's totally fine. I'm gonna squirt some blue into that spot. I've still got a little bit of the crimson or the red over here. I don't worry too much about it. Just take a tiny, tiny little bit of it and mix it in with this blue here to get my indigo. Might need just a little bit more. So I'll scoop that out of there, mix that in. It should be kind of a dark, a dark blue is what the indigo color is. But it should definitely look a little different than the blue. In fact, I think like the indigo is closer to like what we normally think of as like just a regular purple than violet. Violet is a lot closer to red. So I got this paint on my brush. Got it mixed up all nice there. And we'll paint that in with our indigo. I think blue and indigo or purple might be my two favorite colors. It's kind of a, a tie between the two of them. I really like blue. I really like purple. I don't know which one I like better. I don't know. It's, it's, it's so hard to choose. I mean, I love all the colors. They're all really pretty, but I think blue and indigo are probably my favorites. Get all that painted in. And if you want to be a little more careful than I'm being, go for it. If you're fine with it being a little, a little sloppy, that's okay too. It's your painting. You paint it the way that you want it to be painted. That's where you can always add a little bit of your own flair to it. And your own style. That's what makes this all different. And that's okay. Get it kind of painted in there. It's looking pretty good. Real close. Just a little bit more. All right. Next, I need some white again. So we want to put that little subtle gradation on the edge of it. So, looks like I need some more white somewhere. Where am I gonna put it? Maybe right in the middle. Just a tiny little bit though. Not, it, it should be smaller than your thumbnail even. Yep, about half the size of my thumb nail. Again, just kind of dip it in on the edge there. Kind of splash it around there a little bit on the edge. There we go. And then once you get it in there, kind of smooth it out a little bit. Then we need to go back. And what are we getting again? Our dry brush. Yep. Seems pretty dry to me. Yep. All right. Start smoothing that out again to get that nice subtle gradation of our indigo or our purple. Like I said, the indigo is more of like your true purple color. It's closer to that than the violet. 
I got it a little too far up there, but that's okay. Gentle with your brush. Turn it around a little bit if you get too much paint on one side. And smooth it on out. That looks nice. It's looking good. I like it. There we go. We had a nice subtle gradation on our indigo there. Just a little bit lighter on the edge. That's all we want. And it's really just to add a little bit of flair to the painting, you know? So it's not flat. That's what's nice about putting this gradation on the edges. It just kind of makes the colors not so flat when we get done with it. All right, we have one color left, but our brushes are dirty, so clean your brush. Okay, last color right here. That's where our violet goes. It's in between our indigo and our red. I've got a little bit right here that I've kind of mixed already, but I want to add a little more red to that. So get your crimson out, add a little more to that. But when you, if you're mixing like your blue into the crimson for your violet, tiny, tiny little bit. This is just what's left over from when I put my, I dip my brush in to make the indigo. There's hardly any blue in there at all. If you were going to put it in there and mix it just a little bit on the tip of your brush and mix it in with the crimson with that there and if you know it's not dark enough yet mine's close but it's just not dark enough yet you got a little bit of that indigo left you can take just a little bit you see how I just got just a tiny little bit on the edge of my brush there you want to use just a little bit of blue should be like hardly any blue at all to get that violet color. It's almost there. I might need just a little bit. When you're mixing your colors too, always go with just a little bit to start with, especially with blue. You can always add more blue to make it darker or get it closer to the color that you want. It's so hard to take that out of there. You know, because if I had to if I had to add more red to it, I'd have to add a lot more red then I would blue if I was going to add blue to it. Because remember, blue is the strongest color. Always use a little bit of your stronger color compared to the other color. Because if it's not close enough yet, you can always add a little bit more of that stronger color to get it to where you want it to be. But I got a nice good violet here. I'm going to get my brush wet and paint that in. Oh yeah, that looks great. That's the color we want. It's looking awesome. A little more water on the brush. You want your brush to be wet but not dripping all the time. Every time you're painting, no matter what you're painting, unless you're doing like a dry brush technique, like I showed you. And you saw there, like I have a lot of paint on this brush. I can always just take my brush and kind of swirl it a little bit in that space to get some of that paint off and then use that paint to finish painting in my section of violet. There we go, we need a little more water and a little more paint. We're close to finishing. Real close. But I don't want to ruin it right at the end here. Let's get it in there. straight line over here to try and get all the white gone if you don't it's not it's not the end of the world but try and get most of it or all of it out of there it's when a nice colorful cool looking painting there we 
there we go. And then kind of smooth out the brush strokes a little bit. Then we need just a touch of white on the edge again. Once we get that going like there, then remember what we do. We take our dry brush, nice dry brush, and it's a little wet. Let's squeeze it out a little bit. All right. Get that dry brush going and smooth out the white into it to get that subtle gradation again and slowly move up the space to bring that darker color back down and get it in there. There we go. Looking good. I love it. Oh yeah, this is a great painting. It's a great painting just for a little exercise looks good so there's one last thing I want to do and I want to let it dry so let the entire painting dry make sure it's dry to the touch should take about five to ten minutes depends how much paint you put on it but let it dry a little bit we're gonna come back and I'm gonna show you one cool thing that you can do oh yeah and wash your brush So our painting is dry. Um, if you're in a hurry for it to dry, you can always kind of wave it around a little bit if you want, or you can hit it with a hair dryer. That's what I did with mine. I just took it over and like took the hair dryer and kind of just, you know, gently dried it with the hair dryer. Or you can just let it dry naturally. If you just let it sit there and dry, it'll take about 10 minutes at the most. Um, so we got all this nice and dry. What I want to do now is I want to kind of add a little flair to it to kind of make it my own painting. And I'm going to use our round brush, our number eight round. When you get a brand new brush like this one is, you always want to kind of just kind of grab the ends and kind of, you know, smush it around a little bit. Because brand new brushes always have a little bit of glue left in on the, on the bristles, you know, because they put glue in it to get it to stick in there. And there's always a little bit left on the edges, like I can feel it right there. There's a little bit of glue in there. So if you got a brand new brush like this one, you know, kind of smush it around and get some of that glue out of it. All right, so I'm going to take some white. I'm going to squirt out a little bit of white. And I'm going to use my number eight round and get my brush nice and wet. Dip it into my nice pure white there. And I am just going to quickly just put my name in there. D-A-V. And I'm going to go with my nickname, which most people don't usually call me. We're going to go with Dave. If you want to make it perfect, just kind of, you can draw it out with a pencil and make it perfect, you know, so you don't, you know, get to like halfway through your painting. And then like, if your name's like really long, like if it's like, you know, eight letters or something, you might want to space it out. But I'm just going with four here, so I'm not too worried about it. But like I said, if your name's really long, maybe you want to space it out. You don't have to write your name in there. You could put like a peace sign on there. That would be kind of cute too. You know, whatever. Just don't overtake the color. That's the main thing. So I've got that right there. Go over it a little bit. If it's a little bit see-through, that's okay too. This part is all optional. You can kind of do it however you want. But like I said, it's just to add a little bit of flair to it. I need to put in the E. There we go. And 
And now with our white like that, I want to wash off this brush. Get out there, and then I'm going to grab my ivory black. Just a tiny little bit of black. Don't use too much. Just a tiny little bit. And get that ivory black in there. Let me see. And make sure our brush is wet. So the reason I'm using a round though too is the round brush is kind of better for doing like, you know, gestural strokes. That type of thing. I, I kind of think of the round more as the brush of like, I do it once and it's good, or I just, you know, do it a couple times and it's good and I don't, I don't mess with it. The flat brushes are more forgiving, I think, and you know, it's kind of for like going like back and forth motions. You don't want to do that with a round brush. With a round, it's kind of just kind of paint it and let it be. With the flats, like you can kind of, you know, go back and forth and kind of um, change it here and there however you want. I'm going to take my black and I'm going to go just a little bit to the side of my white. Let it mix in just a little bit. I just think that looks kind of cool. It doesn't have to mix in perfectly. You know, and you don't have to use the black if you want. If you like the white, just leave it white. It's fine. I like to kind of make kind of an outline with the black. Again, this is all you know, your painting, however you like to do it. I'm just kind of making it up as I go. And that's kind of what I want you to do with this part. Just kind of make it up a little bit as you go. The main thing is don't spend a lot of time on it because it's just a cute little way to finish the, the painting off. If you want to use a different color than white, that's okay. Just kind of do it however you like to do it. There we go. Oh, I like the way that turned out though. We got my paint in here with my name on it. It looks great. I love it. I hope you guys had fun. Um, if you have any questions, of course, send me an email, send me a message. However you want to get a hold of me, we can always Zoom and talk about it. Um, I'd love to see your paintings too. If you want to send me a picture or if you want to jump on Zoom and talk about it, talk about the experience, that'd be great. Um, and if you aren't, uh, if you didn't sign up for the class, that's okay too and you came along. But if, if you'd like to, you know, donate a little bit to the McCrosty Art Center who is sponsoring all of this, the link is down below there. You can go to our website and donate if you wish. That would be wonderful. But otherwise, I will see you next week. And don't forget to clean your brushes after you're done. I don't know. Did I ever say that? I don't remember. <laughs> Have a good day.